This sphere has magical powers. Hold both ends of the string and you can slowly lower it and lower it and lower it, but then it starts to go up again and then down again and then up, up, back to the top. But how does it work and how can you make one for yourself? I first came across this magical toy on a video from none other than Tim of Grand Illusions. In this video titled Rising Golden Ball, he demonstrates this fascinating phenomenon of a ball seemingly defying gravity and rising back up a string. Other than a short description in the video, there's no images showing the inner workings and sadly the link to buy one no longer exists. So I simply had to figure it out for myself and make one for my own collection. My first thought was to do a thorough googling and patent search to see if anything came up and while I unearthed some wild ideas indeed, it didn't get any closer to a diagram showing exactly what's going on here. But remember that short description given? The clues are all there. Tim states that inside the ball is a pulley system, two pulleys of different sizes, with the thread wound around both of them. Pulling the two ends of the thread makes the ball go up, releasing the thread lets the ball descend. Pulley systems are capable of simply incredible things such as multiplying and redirecting force. Just watch Destin's video on the humble snatch block on Smarter Every Day to see just how cool these systems are. He even 3D printed his demonstrator which I can totally get behind. But what of the pulley system in this secretive sphere? Well the hint is with those two pulleys of different sizes. So to demonstrate I have one 16mm pulley attached to a 32mm pulley giving us a ratio of 2 to 1. When you attach it in place and pull on the larger pulley 200mm, the smaller one quite expectedly moves up only half of that by 100mm and due to the reduction you could lift twice as much mass because we're moving twice as far. But and bear with me, this is where it gets pretty weird. Here we have exactly the same pulley, but this time we're fixing the string from the smaller pulley in place and the pulley is able to actually move up and down in space. What do you think will happen when I pull the string on the larger pulley down 100 millimeters? Pause the video and comment down below and let me know what you think because it's pretty confusing the first time you see it. Okay, have you written your answers down below? Well, as I pull down on the larger pulley, the pulley goes up by 100 millimeters, not 50, not 200, 100, exactly the same amount I pulled down. So what the heck is going on? Well, remember the magic of pulley systems and their ability to redirect force? Well, we're still seeing the same reduction as before with the fixed pulley two to one, but it's also moving up by one. And you can see the string to the larger pulley really does travel 200 millimeters, but it's just moving upwards in the process. This confused the heck out of me for quite a long time, so just to make sure it's not a fluke, here's a 3 to 1 pulley, and as expected, moving it down 200 millimeters results in the pulley translating up 100 millimeters, so it's 1 minus 3. So that's the theory out of the way, and I did need a bit of help to get all this right, so thank you Steve. So how does the 3D printed version actually work? Well, as with many things, converting the theory to the real world is a lot harder than you might think, and I went through countless revisions before arriving at this final design. For a start, I tried a range of ratios to find which gave the most satisfying movement. The closer to 1 to 1 the ratio gets, the further up the ball moves in comparison to the distance you pull down, but it also becomes a lot more difficult to move. Also, the pulleys are offset from the center of the sphere, and if you route them to the center through too tight a path, the whole mechanism binds up when you apply tension. And the axle also needs to be held very securely and precisely in the center of the ball to avoid the pulleys being pulled into the top or bottom of the shell and rubbing. And I use two bearings here to help it spin freely and minimize binding. And keeping the threads on the pulley turned out to be an incredible challenge in itself because if you just think about it, both ends are just hanging loose. It's not a closed pulley system like you'd normally have. So when you let go of them, you lose all the tension and they'll just derail off the pulley and jam the whole mechanism. If you've ever let go of the end of like a fishing reel or filament for that matter, you'll know the pain. In the end, I had to add a significant amount of material around the pulleys 
to help prevent the thread from jumping. It also had to be easy to manufacture on standard FDM slash FFF 3D printers, so the size was increased and clearances added, but this limitation meant the ball, while functional, was super ugly because it really has to be printed in this orientation. And just in case you're not familiar, this technology lays down molten plastic line by line, layer by layer, and the undersides of spheres are notoriously challenging to print as the plastic fights against gravity as it cools. So to complete the look, I designed this aesthetic snap-on cover, which also helps gradually guide the filament thread back to the central axis as it leaves the sphere. These parts are printed in gorgeous polyacme gold and silver PLA filament, and here's a cross-section view of the whole design so you can see how it works. So much for a simple sphere. You can find links to this model in the video description if you'd like to print one for yourself. And the hardest part of the assembly is threading the pulley. You'll need two flange bearing of the F623ZZ variety with 3mm internal diameter and 10mm outside diameter. And they are pressed into place after threading to help catch the end of the thread. The thread can still pull free if you pull too hard however, so maybe consider melting the end into a little ball to help lock it in place. Or just dropping a tiny amount of glue into the hole after threading it through. Speaking of thread, um, 15 pound test fishing braid is great with zero flex, but I found upholstery thread has just a tiny bit of stretch to it and it's available in a much bigger range of nicer colors. Plus it seems to cut into the plastic less. So I went with that for the final design, but both work whatever you can get your hands on. A long M3 bolt with its head cut off makes a perfectly good axle. Just thread that through your bearing and press it down to the slot. It should reach the bottom of the slot and the pulley shouldn't feel bound up. Now time to thread the whole mechanism. You want to wind the larger pulley only a good number of times. This will determine how far up your sphere can rise when you pull on the bottom thread. Give yourself a bit of extra thread to work with and while keeping the pulley taut, carefully thread the end through the holder and out the bottom. This can take a few goes, it's a bit tricky, and I find it can help using some tape at the bottom to hold that thread in place once it's through, just temporarily. Next, run the smaller pulley thread through the top half and very carefully snap them together. It will only snap in place in the correct orientation, so don't worry too much, but you gotta make sure none of that thread derails inside the mechanism or it simply won't work. Now is a good time to test. You should be able to hold both threads and pull on the bottom one. It should result in the sphere rising up, the string, and when you release tension, it should migrate back down due to gravity. Don't force it if it binds up. You might want to help guide it a bit, but it's most likely a rough spot in one of the pulleys rubbing, so open it up again and see what might be sticking and correct it before you move on. Once you're satisfied, you can secure and place the aesthetic covers to hide away the mechanism and snap it all together. These covers are locked in place with the middle ring. Simply thread them into place and while holding both halves, rotate the ring to lock them together. Cut your string to an appropriate length and tie a simple loop knot to each end so you can hold on to it. And there you go. You're ready to wow your friends and family as they try to figure out just how this magical sphere actually works. This project has been a ton of fun to figure out and honestly, it was a lot more challenging than I originally expected, but the result is really neat and even now it's still incredibly magical. If you'd like to make one for yourself, you can find the links in the video description or shared on my Patreon along with source files there so you can actually modify and play with the design if you want to suit your needs. You might want to try a different pulley ratio or make the whole thing bigger or maybe smaller. I'd love to see what you come up with and share your results with me at Twitter at Makers Muse. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more strange mechanisms and designs, then maybe consider subscribing. And if Tim from Grand Illusion sees this, dude, I would absolutely love to send you one of my 3D printed designs for your collection. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.